Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I am excited to start this Obsidian series on YouTube. The idea is to create an Obsidian Vault from scratch and including new features, plugins and workflows in each video. Basically, an interactive shared learning experience. I am also thrilled to announce a new addition to my website, the Insider Membership Level. As Insider, you benefit from access to the comment section under my blog post, plus access to downloadable Obsidian resources such as notes and Vault templates included this vault that we will build together. Your subscription would not only grant you these perks, but also be a fantastic way to support my work as content creator. So without further ado, let's start building our new Obsidian vault, shall we? Let's start by installing the theme. So open the settings, appearance, click on manage, and the theme I use is Minimal by Capano. The choice of the theme is purely subjective, but I choose Minimal because I think that minimalist design helps you focus on the content of your notes without visual distraction. Although the theme is called minimal, that doesn't mean it can't be customized according to your preferences. You can adjust colors and other details to suit your unique style, and we will see how very soon. Click on Install and Use, and as you can see, the appearance of the vault is already changed. Still in the Appearance section, you can change the accent color, my personal preference is purple, but feel free to choose a color that suits your taste. I also like to change the interface and text fonts to by Jam Jury. And select a monospace font for code blocks and front matter. Lastly, I want to remove the inline title from my notes along with all the icons from the ribbon menu. I've decided to do this because I use the command palette to activate most of the commands, which can be easily opened by pressing command P or control P. Also, in the future we will use the ribbon menu to place custom commands that we will create. Ok, now before proceeding with the customization, let's create the folders that will define our vault structure. I've already published a video about the structure I use, but we are going to recreate it from scratch. So, the first folder is Attachment. That will be the repository for all our images, PDFs, videos, or any other file type. Then we have a folder simply named Canvas, where we will store every Canva we are working on. The Categories folder is one of the most important folders of our vault. It will contain broad overviews of our notes, divided by categories. We will go deeper to this in the next video. Journal is where we will store the daily, weekly, monthly and yearly notes, divided in four subfolders. 01 daily, 02 weekly, 03 monthly and 04 yearly. I number them so they will be displayed in the right order. Then we have notes, a generic folder where we will store all our notes. I created this folder because I suggest you to maintain the workspace as much clean as possible, without leaving notes in the root directory of the vault. Read Later is a folder that we can use to store all the highlights and notes that we take from everything we capture through a Read Later app like Readwise, Omnivore or Instapaper. In one of the next videos, I will show you how you can set it by using Omnivore that it's a very good read letter app and it's also free. In the meantime, you can see how you can integrate Readwise into Obsidian in one of my previous videos. The last folder is Templates, another important folder of the vault that will contain all the templates we will use for our notes. Now that our folder structure is completed, open the settings, files and links, and here I'm going to specify the attachments folder as the default location for new attachments. And I want to do the same thing with the canvas folder inside the canvas section. So any new canvas file will be automatically stored inside the canvas folder. And now let's take a look at the core plugin section. Here you can change options according to your needs. I just enable the Properties View option because I personally like to see the metadata of the files in the sidebar. We will come back to this section in the future videos, but for now I leave the rest as it is. After the core plugins, we can proceed to the Community Plugin section. 
The first time you open this section, you will need to turn them on by simply clicking this button here. Click on Browse, and the plugins we will install in this first video of the series are Minimal Theme Settings, Style Settings, Hider, Icon Eyes, and Beauty Tab. Now that we have installed and enabled these plugins, let's set them one by one starting from the minimal theme settings. I absolutely recommend this plugin in combination with the minimal theme. This plugin allows you to customize interface colors, fonts, and layout. I personally use the dark mode, and Flexoki, in my opinion, is by far the best color scheme for dark mode. Then I enable the colorful active states so I can clearly see active files and menu items as they become highlighted according to the accent color set in the appearance section. I disable the maximize media option because I prefer to manage the size of the embedded media. Under the layout section, I only enable image grids because I can easily arrange images in columns or different rows. For example, in this note, I have embedded two images. If I switch to reading mode, as you can see, they will appear one next to the other. But if I want to see them in two different rows, I just need to add a line break between them. Lastly, I set the normal and wide line width to 75. Now, let's open the style settings options. This plugin simplifies the vault customization process. As you can see, it provides an intuitive settings panel where you can configure various options without diving into complex configuration files. The first option I change is the callout style under the callout section. By default, callouts look like this, but if I change from field to outlined, they appear more simple and clean. Then I do some changes on headings. For the level 1 headings, I change the font size to 1.2 and enable the divider line below them. For the other headings, I only do small changes to the font. Then, under the list and task section, I change the checkbox shape to square, and I enable the strike completed tasks option. I like to see a strike through line on completed tasks. Under properties, I prefer to hide the properties heading above the properties section and to see borders between properties. To do that, I simply need to enable the hide properties heading and property row lines options. As sidebar tab style, the default option is modern compact, but I prefer the modern wide. Then we have the table section. A table in Obsidian looks like this, but thanks to style settings, we can definitely improve its aspect. So, I enable the row lines, column lines, cell lines, striped rows, disable line wrap, and highlight active row options. And I'd say that now the table looks way better. For the tabs, that by default look like this, I prefer to increase their heights to 45 and change the style to modern. And lastly, for the tags, I like to change the shape from fill to rounded. Now let's jump to Hider. This plugin is useful to hide certain parts of the Obsidian UI. I personally use it to hide scroll bars and the properties when I am in reading view. Then we have Icon Eyes. 
I love this plugin because it helps me to create an intuitive and visually pleasing vault structure by assigning a different icon to each folder. First of all, I can set a default color for the icon. I personally like to use the same color used for the accent color that we set earlier in the appearance. Then I just need to add one or more icon facts. For example, I like the simple icons and the tabler icons. Now, when I right click on a folder, I just need to click on change icon and choose the icon I want. Lastly, we have Beauty tab that allows you to personalize the new tab screen. Let's set it real quick. I remove the top left search button. I use the 24 hour time format. I change the greeting text to greeting Marco. And I enable the bookmarks. I published an entire video regarding this plugin, I will leave the link in the description down below. The very last thing I want to do in this episode is to move these notes in the right folders. And adjust the right sidebar. I like to separate the backlinks and outgoing links sections from the rest. And also add the local graph to this group by opening the command palette and search for graph view, open local graph and put it here. Well, I don't know what to think, but I love how our vault looks so far. This is just the first episode and we will implement new features, plugins, workflows and much more in the future. Remember that this vault along with other future vaults and notes templates will be downloadable directly from my website, mindstoneconsulting.net or anyone will join the Insider membership. You can follow me on X and Mastodon and you can also join my Discord server and subscribe to my website at no cost for further content about productivity, PKM and note taking. I will leave all the links in the description down below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share your thoughts in the comments. Also, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. In the meantime, stay productive.